Nowadays, healthcare providers are increasingly asked to do more with less because of limited healthcare resources. And under this type of pressure, a potential pitfall is for us to take an expedient, narrow view and seek simple, clear explanations and interventions for complex problems. Isn't it easier when all we have is a hammer? Then everything is a nail. But isn't there more to thoughtful diagnosis and treatment than just identifying a list of symptoms and then quickly prescribing a drug? While it's tempting to narrowly focus on simple answers to complicated problems, I believe we need to deal with significant ambiguity and uncertainty in order to identify the multiple causes of and contributing factors to a patient's problems. I believe that traumatic brain injury, along with all health conditions, is best viewed from a biological, psychological, and social perspective. Injury occurs to a person with a particular physical status, particular life experiences and coping style, and particular current relationships with individuals and organizations. As a psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, I deal with emotional, behavioral, and cognitive problems of traumatic brain injury survivors and their families. I find it helpful to view the nature and severity of those problems as determined by a protective barrier, as discussed by neuropsychologist Thomas Kay. This protective barrier is comprised of biological, psychological, and social factors, and it is individual differences in the components of the protective barrier that explain why similar neurological insults produce inconsistent outcomes. To understand and treat brain injury-related disabilities effectively, it helps to look at the components of the protective barrier that stand between the force of impact and the brain. As one author stated, it's not only the kind of injury that matters, but the kind of head. In today's healthcare climate, we are certainly challenged by the multiple factors interacting to result in our patients' disabilities. It would be so much easier to take a narrow approach, but hopefully, motivated by caring and concern for our patients, we will still find the time and energy to view complex problems through the biopsychosocial perspectives and deliver the best quality of care.